All right, so the guy that I think many people expected to go at five goes at seven here, but to the same team, so kind of what's the difference? The New York Giants end up with Evan Neal, probably the most complete tackle uh, in this draft, I would say. We'll get into it. I'm a little bit lower on Neal than some others. I still really like him. I, I have him as like a, you know, uh, I think this is a good pick. I'm glad that the Giants made this selection. I'm just not quite as high on him as some others. Uh, I, I had him as tackle three, but I still think he's really good. Uh, I'll explain my kind of my nitpicks about him, but also what I like about him. I think this is a move that uh, will help the Giants franchise out a lot. So yeah, let's just jump into the film. So let's start off with a play like this. So this is going to really just show the insane athleticism that Evan Neal has. Because you, know, you see this you know huge guy at 6'8", but he can move. And that's just what makes him so incredible, is he's someone who isn't just a big guy with power. No, he can move. And that's even why you know I've made some should he be a guard comments uh, when I made my you know, podcast talking about him. And that wasn't even because I don't think he can be a tackle. And we'll get more on that in a second. But just because like if he wants to play card, he could be an awesome guard as well. He could do both. And anyways, w just watch what he's going to do here. I mean, look at him get up to that second level so well and then just completely annihilate the linebacker uh, while doing it. So he has the, the speed and the footwork to get to his spot. And then, of course, he has the power to just, you know, annihilate guys. So right off the bat, that's the first thing you love about him. Now, if we go over to a negative, uh, this is something that just kept jumping out at me when watching film. I've never seen a, a tackle fall down more, uh, you know, as a big prospect. I guess maybe some lesser prospects. But, like, as a big prospect, he lost his footing a decent amount. And I'm not sure if it's a footwork thing, if it's a, he just got beat sometimes, which he would get beat. Like, that's kind of the one thing about Neil. He still had good production at Alabama, but it wasn't quite what Iguanyu or Cross had. That is fair to bring up. But like, as you see on this play, you know, he's not just going to get beat by a, a pretty good move by 95 there for Ole Miss. But, you know, he <laughs> fell to the turf as well, which is not ideal. So again, how big of a deal is that? I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're getting beat, you're getting beat. But it seems like he just fell down a lot. So I don't know if it's because he has a high center of gravity, if he's a little skinny, just, you know, despite being over 330 pounds, uh, just because of how tall he is. I don't know. But that's, you know, uh, something I noticed. That is a negative. But as for the positives, let's go over here now. So obviously, you know, being as tall as he is, he just, he has a, has a reach advantage. And it's not like he's one of those guys who is tall but has smaller arms, like, you know, 34-inch arms. So he has long arms as well. And watch what's going to happen on this play. As you see, he is able to just get the hand placement he wants immediately because he has those long arms. And that's something that helps, right? The further, or basically the further away from the quarterback that you can initiate that contact, it just helps you a little bit more. And you can get the hand placement you want, which now makes it really difficult to rush the passer if you are an edge rusher. Typically, what you're going to have to do is now you know, dislodge one of those arms. But, you know, uh, it... Typically, what you would like to do is never have Neil get the correct hand placement to begin with, and especially in today's NFL, where you can basically grab onto the jersey as long as uh, you know you let go once the, the opposing player gets back, uh, you know, gets past you. It's just going to be really difficult to win once you get to this spot if you are a defensive player. Like, look, as you see, I mean, look at how long Neil is able to hold on with a one-on-one -on -one matchup there. I mean, that was a long time to be one-on-one -on -one blocking, but he was able to do exactly that, which is definitely promising. And, you know, that's why he is such a hyped up prospect. And also stuff like this, he is going to help in the running game. And this is an example where you're going to double team an interior defensive lineman and then get up to the second level to block uh, a linebacker. So that's the way this play works for Neil. He is the, the left tackle on this play. So out of the two guys who are starting to double team, he is the, you know, one on the left who will be starting off blocking and then getting up to the linebacker to finish off the block and watch him help clear out that double team and still get up to the second level quickly enough. The halfback was able to follow him and get into the end zone for a touchdown. So again, he can do this stuff and he can do this stuff consistently. That's one of the many things to like about Evan Neal. Finally, we can go over to one more negative. And like, listen, there were some negatives on tape with Evan Neal. There's plenty of positives, plenty of stuff to like. I like him as a player. I think that, you know, he's very good and will help any football team. But there are some negatives. I mean, he's also someone who doesn't quite have the, you know, he didn't have as much production, as I said, as Ikuanyu and 
as Cross, those guys both won more consistently than Neil did. They did. But anyways, this is kind of how, you know, this is maybe a concern to have if you want to have concerns with Neil at the next level, what could potentially go wrong. So first, you're going to see something really good to start this play. Look at how right when this play begins, he is able to get that left arm out and gets it, you know, where he wants to. Again, this is his reach. But the issue is the defender kind of grabbed that left arm and is going to try to push it to sort of, you know, away from the bottom of the screen. He's going to try to push Neil's left arm towards hit Neil's right, which could then mean that he doesn't have the hand placement he wants, and it could allow the edge rusher to just get past Neil. Look, as you see, he is able to get past Neil and, you know, help create some pressure there. So if you want to have a concern, maybe that's the concern. Maybe for someone like Neil, his arm length was so great that it was al allowing him to get the hand placement he wants consistently. But then at the NFL level, when guys know how to kind of, you know, guys are better at getting around that uh, and still knocking the hands away, he might have to learn proper hand placement. That's something I think is fair to be a little concerned about. It maybe could cause a little bit of a slower development than others. But again, this is nitpicky. This is not a big concern. I do think that he's still, his tape is very good and his production still was good. So uh, just, you know, if we have to separate these top guys, this is why, you know, I might have a couple of tackles higher than him, but he's still really good. So yeah, it's an interesting selection. Uh, one thing that kind of jumps out at me is I'm a little surprised that the Giants waited till seven to make this pick instead of five. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter, but I'm just kind of interested in like the, so what's, what's funny about it is I'm just sort of thinking uh, myself personally, Kyle and I did a mock draft yesterday and I had the Giants picks I had the odd numbers and I picked uh, a different player than offensive line at five and then I realized oh I shouldn't have done that because now the Panthers can pick an offensive lineman that did happen they got Akeem McWanyu uh, at six maybe the Giants knew that was going to happen and didn't you know, they were fine with that. So that's why they decided to select Thibodeau. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. That's just kind of an interesting little wrinkle there. But yeah, as for Evan Neal, like, listen, Evan Neal on one side and Andrew Thomas on the other, that's one of the most athletic tackle tandems like ever. Like that's insane. Just the, the uh, you know, the athleticism those two guys have. Thomas, obviously an incredible athlete. Neal, an incredible athlete. I'm assuming he's going to play right tackle. That's my assumption. He could play guard as well if you wanted to, but I'm assuming they're drafting him to be a tackle. Could make for a very interesting team. Like the Giants offense isn't bad. Giants got two really good players. I mean, Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau. There's some people that have Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau as their one and two prospects in this draft class. Like there are people probably who do that because there's people who have Thibodeau as their number one uh, prospect and there's people that have Neil as their number one prospect so the Giants got them both they got two awesome players that was the goal with two top seven picks to get two awesome players and they ended up getting two awesome players so uh yeah it, it's hard to really find too much to dislike about this stuff that's what I think about all of it uh what do you guys think what are your thoughts on Evan Neal going to the uh, New York Giants do you agree with some of my criticisms or do you think that I'm being crazy uh definitely let me know you know the whole fun of this is the discussion so let me know in the comments below always love hearing from you and of course as always thanks for watching